This is the Pico 4. That's right, a consumer VR headset with mixed reality capabilities. In this first impressions video, I will show you what's inside the box, demonstrate its setup process, I give you a rundown on the games, I'm pushing the pass through to, well, the limit, literally. Indoors, try PC VR streaming, and I will compare the Pico 4 to the Quest 2. Full disclosure, this headset was provided for free by Pico, but as always, opinions are my own. So with that being said, grab a drink and let's jump right into the metaverse together. Let's uh, kick things off with the unboxing. The package is very simple in design. On the front we only find the Pico 4 logo, but luckily on the side there is a picture of the hardware as well. On the back of the box we can find its launch titles, with the highlights being Blade and Sorcery, Rec Room and After the Fall. When we slide it open and pull up the box, we are being met with of course the headset. You instantly see how small the Pico 4 is, featuring an array of 5 onboard cameras. The 4 on the outer edges, making sure you can freely move around in VR, and one that gives you a mixed reality pass-through in full color. That camera is positioned right in the middle of the glossy black front plate, something that reminds me a lot of Ready Player One. It's good to know that the Pico brand and business is owned by tech giant ByteDance, the Chinese company who you might know from, uh, well, TikTok. On paper, the Pico 4 has a decent lineup of specs, especially for this generation standalone headsets. Next to running mobile games, it also has the capability to stream PC VR titles. As of the recording of this video, it's only available in Europe, UK and Asia, with uh, the United States coming, I think, at a later date in 2023. For 128 gigabytes, you pay 429 euros, and for 256 gigs, you pay 499. When we check the back of the headset, we can find the pancake lenses and the magnetic face cover. The lenses are impressively large and thin at the same time. The head strap is made out of one piece, by the way. It uses an inbuilt battery that unlocks about uh, three hours of playtime and supports quick charge 3.0. Obviously, the knob on the back allows you to adjust it, and the speakers are located on the inside. Oh, and the volume button sits on top. An additional overhead strap seems to be the finishing touch here. Next up are of course the controllers. They have large uh, tracking bows that overlap your hands with an interesting combination of buttons. The left controller has a special button to open the menu in VR games, and the right controller features a button for snapshots and recording video. Uh, each controller houses two AA batteries that you can easily pop out. According to Pico, they last about 80 hours. Other things that come in the box are a quick user and warranty guide, a rubber nose pad that you can if you want attached to the face cover, a spacer for people who wear glasses, a USB-C cable with a power adapter and lanyards for extra safety. Surprisingly enough, no sign of a lens cloth. Well, that is the thing you need the most with Pico 4's front plate. What the heck? Um, so, well, let's dive into the setup process. It's quite simple, you boot up the headset, uh, choose a language, connect to your Wi-Fi and log in or sign up with your Pico account. You then get a brief explanation on how to wear the headset and the way you change its IPD. This is very interesting because it's fully electric and can be changed from within the menu. It goes from 58 all the way to 72 millimeters in a stepless fashion. So when you are ready and you did all of that, you get to set up a play space. Default lets you create a standing or seated circle around you. This automatically calculates where the floor is, but if you want you can also do it manually. In case you pick seated mode, it just starts on a higher level. Custom is where the real magic happens. It's the same process as default, but this time you get to draw your very own play space. The max you can draw is 10 by 10 meters. And that's it, you are then being met with the menu where you can start your adventures. The icons in the menu speak for themselves. Explore is where you can find highlighted games, store is where you can buy games, and the library is where you can play your games. We will come back to the file manager later. And before I dive even deeper into the menu, I have to state that what I'm about to show you here is not the final software and that it's not representative of the true experience for consumers. These are Pico's words. Anyways, uh, let's move on because what's nice is that streaming services like Disney+, Apple TV, YouTube and Pico Video come preloaded. 
Pico Video is a place where you can watch uh, 360 and TikTok content. You heard me right, this is the very first version of TikTok in VR. For now, you can only like and swipe through videos, but I can't wait to see this evolve into more. The quick settings is where you can turn up the brightness, create a new play space, adjust your IPD and screencast. Screencast is actually pretty cool. You can share what you see from within your headset on a TV, computer or mobile device. I can confirm that this works really, really well. Uh, in general settings, you can pick your virtual environment. You can choose between a villa and the mountains, a space capsule and a cyber room. A bunch of other things you can do in the settings is boost the Pico to 90 Hertz and unlock a quick see-through mode that lets you double tap the side of the headset to peek into the real world or to hug a big daddy. Oh, so cute. Uh, not really. In the dev mode, you can play around with the hand tracking. First impression? It's okay, it does have a slight delay and sometimes your hands do disappear, but hey, it does work. You can even take them out of your play space. Next level. Overall, the menu feels rushed though, even that it's work in progress. It does the trick, yeah, but content wise, it feels very bare bones. I'm shocked that alongside Pico Worlds, the friend and avatar system that Pico announced are launching in 2023. This, in my opinion, should have been there on launch and Talking about rushed, Pico 4 doesn't even sell a carrying case right now, as that's also coming next year. Okay, well, let's talk about the Pico Force Comfort then. For me personally, it's a mixed bag. I found the cushion size and the shape hard to adjust to my own face. The fact the material is uh, thick and stiff does not only impact how well it cups your face, but also the field of view. In my opinion, they could have done a way better job at bringing your eyes closer to the lenses, while at the same time increasing the comfort dramatically with a far thinner, better shaped and softer cover. So. Third party companies, if you're watching, this is your moment. Another problem it causes is that light bleeds easily into the headset. I had multiple people trying this out and we all had the same problem. Oh no, uh, the rigid backside isn't much better. While maxing out the dial, it struggled to grab the rear of my head. And this together results into a headset that doesn't always sit straight on my face, at the slightest movement causes it to wobble on my nose and that doesn't do the pancake lenses justice. My last resort was to read the menu Manual, but even that didn't make a difference. It just doesn't like my golem shaped head, I guess. <laughs> also an issue is that the strap cannot be detached. In my opinion, a big mistake, especially in my case. <laughs> Despite all of that, the weight is fantastic though. It's by far the lightest headset I've ever tried. It's only 180 grams, it's crazy. Uh, the combo of the overhead strap, battery in the back and the mobile computer in the front is a match made in heaven. Pico 4 proves that small form VR our glasses are almost here. Minus the comfort. Before I forget, I did ask my brother's girlfriend to test out the spacer as she's wearing glasses and from her experience I can share that the glasses were not touching the lenses and that the comfort inside was fine. So there you go. A uh, Pico Force display is a pleasure for the eyes thanks to the pancake lenses, LCDs and a resolution of 4320 by 2160. It has great blacks, whites and does have a moderate glare around lighter things in darker scenes. The overall colors are vibrant and popping, plus the contrast is great. Since it doesn't use Fresnel lenses, but pancakes, you don't have to worry about the sweet spot at all. And thanks to plenty of airflow, there's a small chance your lenses are going to fog up during intense play sessions. The field of view, on the other hand, is hard to judge as the strap and face cover kind of ruins it for me right now. I have to just push my head real hard against the cushion to uh, enjoy it. Anyhow, uh, time for the most fun feature of the Pico 4, I would say, and that is its 60 hertz full color pass through. It's a sneak peek into how virtual and augmented reality are slowly melting together. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's kind of cool. The front camera puts out a flat pass through video with no depth and there are still distortions here and there on screen. Its purpose is to make you aware of your surroundings indoors, but I do expect other use cases such as uh, turning your living room into a real life game or getting to play with holograms. With the lack of a depth uh, sensor, it is hard to recommend for serious work and productivity situations. That's where the Pico Pro comes in. At broad daylight, it performs the best, adapting fine to different light transitions, but you do sometimes bump into a flip flickering TV or lamp. During sunset, I took the headset outside for a little test. 
Hello. Hi. Yeah, multiple people gave me funny looks, but hey, uh, I got to play with my brother's dog Truffle, explore the secrets of the season, and also impressed was the neighbor's cat. Aw, cutie. Then I rode a kick scooter for a short distance and drove my bicycle as well. That's right, do not try this at home. Please, don't. On top of that, never point your lenses into direct sunlight as this can damage your screen. During my tests I found out that it indeed doesn't go beyond 10 by 10 meters, so a large empty uh, basketball or tennis court could work too. When it's getting nighttime, it's not great at all. The pass through just fills itself with grain and it's really hard to see what you are doing. Moving on to the audio. The speakers sound, well... Fine, <laughs> the high and low tones are there, but the lack of bass does make it sound rather flat. Since it has no headphone jack, the only option to wear a pair of headphones is to buy a third-party USB-C adapter. The one I tested worked and as a bonus can be used for charging as well. I can report that large gaming headphones fit better over the strap than smaller ones. The microphone sounds okay-ish, I mean, listen to this. Hey, this is me, Nathy. I'm speaking through the microphone of the Pico 4. For the controllers, I have nothing bad to say, really. They do the job. I find the snapshot button uh, super useful and being able to go to the main menu from both controllers is neat uh, too. They fit nicely in my hands, they aren't too heavy and even when sweating, the material gives you enough grip. Only the thumbsticks and buttons do feel cheap in my opinion. There is also the Pico mobile app. On it you can buy games from the store, but sadly you can't remotely download them to the headset. In the devices tab under media, you can see what you recorded and even post it straight to social media. I tried this with a TikTok and it freaking works. Share link is a feature that lets you type in a website and make it show up inside the browser of the Pico. And last but not least, in the menu section of the app you can track your fitness data. This tracks your progress in VR and even gives you exercise routines. Next year you can buy an additional fitness band that monitors your lower body movements. Uh, so the current library of the Pico 4 has about 150 games. A handful is Asian, with the majority being Western titles. It's good to mention that the Quest 2 is banned in China so that alone is a reason for developers to make some extra cash on Pico 4. I am not overly amazed by the lineup, but it is promising to see bigger studios jumping on board and taking Pico more serious. The performance during my playthroughs was solid on both 72 and 90 Hz. You sadly do have to miss exclusives like Resident Evil and Beat Saber, but that's about it. Pico is working on their own exclusives, with uh, Just Dance being their first big uh, investment. Luckily, Pico can also stream PC VR games. And it's very simple. You go to the official website, download the so-called Link software and install it on your computer or laptop. You have two options, Wi-Fi or USB. Sadly, wired streaming did not work for me. Maybe it didn't like my specs, who knows. But I do expect this to be patched in a future update. I had no issues trying wireless streaming though. The performance and quality was on point and I did not run into any serious stuttering or artifacts. In the link software you can tweak the bitrate, audio delay, play on 90Hz and turn on asynchronous space warp. In 2023 Pico is planning to bring their own Wi-Fi dongle to the market. I also tried virtual desktop. As always it delivers excellent streaming quality with loads of extra features that Link doesn't have and you can even play Oculus PC games. That's the biggest troll ever, right? And that brings us nicely to the file manager. This is the place where you can access all your folders, install games from SideQuest, APKs and stream movies too by using the Remote Play Assistant that you can also download from the website. Fun to know is that the movies you stream can be watched in Pico's own video player that supports 180 and 360 content. If we do a rapid fire comparison between the Pico 4 and the Quest 2, things start to get spicy. Oh yes, first of all the size difference is day and night. The Pico 4, including the battery strap, weighs 586 grams. Well, the standard Quest with a soft strap weighs 503 grams. But the Pico feels way more balanced as its battery 
sits in the back. It's also very compact due to its pancake lenses being super thin and light versus Quest 2's bulky Fresnel lenses. The Quest 2's smaller face cover fits me better with less light bleeding in, but its cushion isn't necessarily softer on the face. Plus, it's front heavy, remember? When I push my head real hard against the cushion, I can see that the field of view of the Pico is slightly bigger, but I can't enjoy it right now. The display of the Pico 4 has a nicer resolution, but it's a very small difference. Difference. But the clarity is crystal clear. Man, look at the difference, it's crazy. Quest 2 though has better brightness and colors. So yeah, wow, uh, this is interesting, right? Also, there is a marginal difference between the black tones, but personally, I'm immersed either way. And that's the same story for the brightness. On the other hand, the pass-through of the Pico is far superior. It's in full color and... Yeah, I don't, I don't need to explain this. I mean, you, you can see what I'm talking about. In terms of the microphone, decide for yourself. Hey, this is me, Nathy. I'm speaking through the microphone of the Pico 4. Hey, this is me, Nathy. I'm speaking through the microphone of the Quest 2. In my opinion, the speakers of the Quest 2 sound better, simply because it's having more bass and both controllers are ergonomically great. The quality of the buttons and thumbsticks is the only thing that sets them apart. If we talk about games, the Quest 2 still wins with its extensive library. But you can see Pico slowly catching up. At this point in time, exclusives is where both companies can start to really compete with each other. As you can see, the Pico 4 is cheaper than Quest 2, but with Meta having invested so much money in R&D throughout the years, they definitely have a head start with more software on board. Hardware-wise, Pico Interactive wins, but content remains king. So if you are looking for a dedicated PC VR headset, the Pico 4 is an excellent candidate. Date. But for the purpose of standalone gaming, I would still go for a Quest, simply because it has more streamlined software and more exclusives for now. And with that, I am going to wrap up this first impressions video. I might do a full uh, review in the future, who knows, but for now, this is it. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to slam that like button and let me know in the comments below in which camp you are. Are you more on the Pico side or the Quest or somewhere in the middle? That's possible too. But I'm very curious to hear what you think of this new uh, headset. But it's definitely competition for Meta, so keep your eyes peeled on what Pico is doing. And with that being said, until next time, see you in the metaphors and bye bye.